You want to find a man to simulate me, right? His handsome face showed viciousness and jealousy. No wonder you were in such a hurry to leave. You were going on a date. Isaac dragged her over and rubbed her lips with his fingers. What, you saw me with Rosaria, so you're jealous? You want to find a man to simulate me, right? Psycho! April trembled because of anger. She didn't understand why she kept dealing with men who believed so much in their own imaginations. Aaron, she could understand, but why the hell would Isaac think that way? She had nothing to do with him anymore. Let go of me, Isaac. Are you insane? You dumped me. I can be with anyone I want, and it's none of your business. She angrily tried to push him away, but failed. So she bit the back of his hand and didn't loosen her teeth until he started bleeding. Who said, I dumped you? Isaac looked at the wound on the back of his hand, feeling all of his internal organs ache. She really didn't show any mercy when biting him. I don't think our engagement has ever been broken. April laughed. You're sleeping with Rosaria. You're doing whatever you can to help her build her career. Didn't you dump me? And now you're mentioning our engagement? <gasps> Aren't you ashamed? Yeah, I am with Rosaria, but I never broke up with you or canceled our engagement. Isaac stared at April and said, You have always been mine. You are free to leave only after I tell you that I don't want you anymore. I am warning you. Stay away from other men. I forbid you to date anyone else, or you'll be in trouble. I'm not kidding. Hearing that, April was shocked. She had never seen anyone as shameless as him. Isaac, you're the president of a company now. Do you have any sense of shame? Don't you have a heart? Really, if you stay loyal to Rosaria, I'd think that you weren't an entirely awful person, but now I found out that I truly can't overestimate you anymore. Just leave. You're so dirty in my eyes that I don't even want to say one more word to you. You were so gentle and kind that I really don't understand how you became like this. Go look in the mirror. You're pretty on the outside, but rotten on the inside. After saying that, April covered her eyes with trembling hands. Still, her tears flew out from between her fingers. She cried not because she still loved him, but because of herself. The past two years, she had been alone, living a bitter life. She wanted to cry all the time, but didn't let herself. Now, this man in front of her had cruelly torn her puppy love, which used to be so sweet and beautiful, into pieces. She wouldn't miss it anymore, not even a little bit. She felt so regretful she hated herself for falling in love with this man because her wrong choice had ruined her family. Why did I become like this? Because of your family. And I'm telling you, this is me, the real me. Isaac felt a dull pain from his heart. He took a step forward and gripped her shoulders to shake her while yelling, Your family owes me. You're going to pay me back with yourself, with your whole life. April was really tired these days. She needed to study, work, and review her lessons at night, and she was just caught in the rain. Being shaken by Isaac, she got too frazzled. Who are you? Winnie showed up behind Isaac and hit his head with her bag. He stumbled two steps backward while Winnie grabbed April's hand and ran away with her. Who knows what would have happened if Winnie didn't appear, April thought to herself. Count yourself lucky for bumping into me like that. I just got off from work, Winnie said. Judging by his attire, he must be someone of importance. How did you get yourself involved with him? He's my ex-boyfriend, April replied with a grimace. We broke up a long time ago, and he is currently seeing someone else. He just appeared out of nowhere today. I have no intentions of seeing him again. Winnie frowned. He looks a little crazy to me. He's a scumbag you were dating? Hang on, I thought you went to buy clothes for Mr. Bennett today. Why are you drenched like a sad puppy? Didn't he offer you an umbrella? Don't talk about it, April said and looked away. It's a dreadful day. He mistook my compassion for romantic affection and kissed me on the lips. I refused him and it felt too awkward to accept his umbrella. We shouldn't be keeping in touch anymore. My God, what a night. When he couldn't help but add on. He's quite a gentleman, isn't he? Maybe you shouldn't have rejected him so hastily. You could have given it a shot. Seriously, dating someone like him would surely catapult your career to greater heights. You're still looking for a voice acting studio to work at, aren't you? I don't want to mix my personal relationships with work. After all, I'm dating with marriage in mind, so I'm looking for someone to spend the rest of my life with. Even if I gave him a shot, there's no way we will end well because we come from different worlds, April said, shaking her head knowingly. Her father was a criminal who committed a felony, while Aaron was part of an influential family of politicians and military men. She wasn't the kind of connection that they would want to make, and would only damage their reputation if she became part of the equation. Winnie was quiet, too. She heard about Aaron's background from Marianne. It would be a hefty burden to date someone like him. 
Aaron rammed his foot hard against the accelerator. When he arrived at the villa, he got out of the car, slammed the door, and angrily marched in. Hey, how'd your date go? Are you kidding me? Why are you soaked? Richard asked as Aaron barged through the doors. He was playing with his phone when he heard Aaron enter and couldn't contain his laughter. Aaron quickly shut him up with an icy glare. Richard stammered, Eh, uh, didn't you tell me you were going on a date with your girlfriend-to-be this afternoon? I was so happy for you, and I came over as soon as I could to congratulate you. I've been waiting for three hours. Aaron didn't break his glare, and he resented Richard for not picking up his phone, which caused April and him to be under the mercy of the terrible storm. If only he picked up the call, then Aaron wouldn't have ended up sharing an umbrella with April, then kissing her uncontrollably and making a mess of everything. This is all Richard's fault, Aaron thought to himself. He was puffing in anger as he stomped upstairs. Richard followed behind him anxiously, only to have the bedroom door slammed in his face, followed by a click of the lock. Aaron was furious and uneasy. After undressing, he walked into the bathroom to stand in front of the mirror. Looking at his own reflection, he admired his bronzed skin, defined abs, and sculpted physique. No matter how busy his schedule was, he never compromised on fitness. His face was also well-proportioned, with a masculine jaw and healthy-looking hair. He was flawless. How could she not fancy someone as perfect as he was? He was perfect, even when drenched from the head to toe. You can't want to be with her only because she's able to make your body react. Aaron just couldn't understand. He took a quick shower, then wrapped himself with a bathrobe and walked out of the bathroom. Hey, where's your girlfriend? Richard hadn't left. Hearing the noise from the bathroom, he hurriedly walked over with a big smile and asked, Who is it? Why have I never heard you mention her before? I came all the way here in the pouring rain to meet her. You're dripping wet, so I guess she is too. You should take the opportunity to bring her back here. When she changes her clothes, <laughs> you two would be like a blazing fire and dry wood. I mean, you can make things happen. Aaron turned his cold eyes to Richard. If he didn't want to ask Richard about something, he would have kicked him out. Do you think I'm as horny as you are? He said. Richard chuckled. He didn't believe his words. Richard believed that the people who looked serious on the outside could be wild on the inside. Aaron took two circles around the room, then suddenly clenched his right hand into a fist. He stared at Richard and asked, Look at me carefully. Am I perfect? Richard didn't know what to say. You too think that I am perfect, right? While he was speaking, the veins on Aaron's forehead suddenly began beating. I am so perfect, but she refused me. She said that she doesn't like me in that way. That's ridiculous. The corners of Richard's mouth twitched slightly. He didn't say anything, but somehow he considered admitting that Aaron was indeed perfect. Uh, who refused you? Even I feel like admiring her, said Richard. Admire what? I think she's foolish. Aaron turned to sit on the couch. Even while sitting, he still looked so high above the masses, his cold face showing anger. I thought a lot on my way back. Now I've calmed down and I've thought carefully. I really don't think she has a reason not to like me. Do you think she could be a lesbian? Richard burst into laughter. Is this funny? Aaron threw an icy cold glance at him while speaking. Even you, who often makes mistakes and has collected a bunch of nasty magazines and discs, has many female pursuers. I am ahead of you by over a thousand points in the ranking list of charming men in our company. Am I not perfect? Richard clenched his teeth. Do you have to depreciate me to make yourself more perfect? People don't always want their other half to be perfect. Sometimes it's about the kind of feeling. Feeling? Aaron gave a proud smile and responded with, With me, she'll surely feel excellent. But if she really likes women, I won't be able to do anything about it. Richard wanted to cry for that woman. Aaron, who on earth are you talking about? He asked. Have I met her? You have. She's April. Sister April? Richard was so surprised that he couldn't even close his mouth. You take a fancy to her? My God, she is capable indeed, but you can't want to be with her only because she can make your body react. She's too old. She's not pretty. She has had many successful plastic surgeries, so she is beautiful now. And she lied to us. She's actually 22. She's a student at Langford. Richard nodded, responded with, If you think she's pretty, she must be really pretty. I truly want to see her. Can you take me to see her? No. Aaron coldly turned his face away. It's nothing but pursuing a girl. It won't be a big deal if you fail. Who says I'm pursuing her? I thought she wanted to be my girlfriend, so I agreed after deep consideration. Aaron interrupted Richard, firmly denying that he was rejected. Come on, don't be a bad sport. You've turned down so many women who have expressed an interest in you. 
But April? I know you well. You have feelings for her, don't you? Although I haven't had the chance to interact properly with her, I can tell that she's not homosexual. Sometimes it's not all about your talent or your family background, you know? Women like romantic men, Richard chuckled. Aaron protested. How am I not romantic enough? I booked the entire restaurant just to have beef noodles with her. Well, beef noodles are beef noodles. You need some combination of steak and wine to be a true romantic. Besides, you didn't buy her anything, did you? At the end, your date even ended up drenched in the rain. What a downer. My main point is, well, you were way too abrasive and blunt. I don't hold it against you, and none of your subordinates at the company will either, but you should treat a lady differently. You have to coddle and compliment her frequently, explained Richard. These are things that desperate men do to chase women when they have difficulty charming them with their personality. I'm used to ladies throwing themselves at me. After all, I am really perfect, Aaron said. You're talking as if you did manage to charm her, Richard thought to himself. You can wait for women to throw themselves at you then, Richard rolled his eyes. I'm not attracted to any of those women, Aaron rubbed his forehead as he recalled the kiss in the rain. It was a heart-fluttering moment and he wished that he could continue kissing her forever. How can he be sure that she's not homosexual? Based on my instincts? Also, she paused for a good second when she first saw me, which shows her primal instinct. She showed appreciation for a good-looking man. So I can be certain that she likes men that way, Richard said. Aaron looked even more grim now. She paused when she saw you? Aaron stood up abruptly and broke into a smile. I understand now. She has poor taste, and that's why she turned me down. I think I'd better give her another chance. Must you say such nasty things? I'm trying to help him out here. I really want to throw a shoe in his face, Richard thought to himself. Enough. It's getting late. Go home. I don't want people to gossip about our sexual orientation. Aaron dismissed him with a wave and then threw the car keys at him. Take the sports car. I don't think it's suitable for me. A smile was creeping up on Richard's face. What a quick change of heart. Little Benny, word of advice on account of our brotherhood. Always coddle and coax a woman. If you butter her up with honeyed words, she'll be yours in no time. Aaron sat quietly as he thought about the whole conversation after Richard left, and 20 minutes later, he called Marvin. Get me a couple of reference books on words of affection as soon as possible, he said. Marvin was silent on his end of the phone for a while, and then he whined, Mr. Bennett, I thought you asked me to prepare a proposal for the Noodle Bar franchise. Which task should I complete first? The books, of course. Who am I going to gift the noodle bar to if I don't have the dating guides? Hurry along and don't tell anyone about this. Aaron hung up quickly. Later, he wondered if April was all right after being drenched in the rain today. He picked up his phone and dialed Marvin's number again. Buy some cough and flu mixtures to deliver to Winnie at the college. She might have caught a cold from tonight's storm. Marvin was bewildered. Mr. Bennett, didn't you just decide to start a romantic relationship with Miss April? Why are you hitting on Winnie now? Do you not feel anything at all for him? It'll be embarrassing for me to give the meds to April directly. Send them to Winnie and she can take some if she ever catches a cold. April and her are roommates anyway. Marvin felt a little speechless about how complicated the whole thing was. Didn't you ask me to buy some books about sweet talk? He asked. Send the medicines to Winnie first, then go buy the books for me, responded Aaron. It was 11 o'clock at night. April took a shower then laid in bed reading a book. A while later, she sneezed a few times in a row and felt a little heavy-headed. Only Winnie and April were in the dorm tonight. Hearing her sneeze a few times, Winnie asked, Do you have a cold? I've really had a miserable day. April gave a bitter smile. Winnie wanted to say something, but her phone suddenly rang. It was Marvin calling. She didn't want to answer the call, but thinking of the relationship between Aaron and April, she still answered it. Win, I'm downstairs. I've brought you some medicine for treating a cold said Marvin with a soft voice. Cold? Winnie didn't understand. I don't have a cold. Mr. Bennett asked me to send them to you. He said it would be embarrassing to send the medicine directly to April, so he asked me to send them to you, and that if April caught a cold, she should take some anyway. Marvin doubted that his boss could ever get a girlfriend without help, so he decided to lend a hand. Don't tell Mr. Bennett about what I said. He'd kill me. All right, I'm coming downstairs now. Winnie chuckled and said, then she hung up the phone and said to April, I'm going downstairs. Ten minutes later, April saw Winnie coming back with a large bag of medicine for a cold. Who gave you all those medicines? So jealous. Give me some now. I'm worried that I might get a fever tomorrow and won't be able to study. 
Well, these aren't for me, said Winnie smilingly. Someone wanted to give these medicines to you through me. He felt that giving these directly to you was too embarrassing. April blinked. Marvin sent them to me. Ah, uh, it's so late at night that his boss forced him to send me some cold medicine. Well, I wasn't caught in the rain. Why did he send medicine to me? While speaking, Winnie opened the plastic bag and said, See all sorts of meds for fever, cough, runny nose. You'll find what you need here. April gave a start while hearing Winnie's words. In her mind, she saw Aaron's proud face. For some reason, she wanted to laugh and her heart was warmed. She didn't feel strange about Aaron doing this at all. However, she was surprised that a man with that low of an EQ actually thought that she might catch a cold and send her medicine. She thought he would never want to talk to her again. Here, find the meds you need, Winnie said after she threw the bag of medicines to April. April took a pill with water. The medicine was bitter. However, looking at the moon in the sky, April sent some faint sweetness from her heart. The next morning when April woke up, her nose wasn't stuffy and her head didn't ache either. When she was having breakfast with Winnie in the canteen, the latter smiling looked at her and said, You look nice. The meds seem to be quite effective. Hmm, I've always been healthy and have rarely caught a cold. While speaking, April lowered her head and stirred her porridge, as if absorbed in her thoughts. Do you think I should say thank you to Aaron? Why? Marvin said that we can't even let Aaron know or he'd feel embarrassed. After saying that, Winnie got a call from Marvin. Win, did you take the medicine last night? Marvin asked that question, then coughed loudly. Winnie felt strange, but soon figured it out. I didn't, she responded. But April caught a cold, so I gave the meds to her. The meds are good. Her cold is gone. Hmm, just checking to be sure. You can go ahead with your work. Winnie was amused after she hung up. Marvin just called me and sounded weird. I'm guessing that he's calling on behalf of someone to check if you're well. Yeah, right. You and your imagination. April smiled. Don't you understand? Even with that incident at the cinema, Mr. Bennett was using Marvin to woo me as an opportunity to come see you. It didn't strike me then, but I'm pretty sure now after the call, insisted Winnie. April bit her lip. She felt the same. Winnie continued. I have a good impression of him, that man. You've made quite a dent in his ego, but he still insisted on sending you home, and now he's sending flu medications and checking up on you? He was such a gentleman at that time at the premiere, too. If you end up with him, he'll surely protect you. Do you not feel anything at all for him? April was chewing on her chopsticks and her cheeks flushed. Well, the answer would be no. There was something, but she couldn't ascertain what kind of feeling it was. When she dated Isaac, he was gentle and romantic, and answered to her every need. Being with Aaron, however, she was often the subject of his blunt banter. Sometimes she was amused, but other times his words stung. She did find his straightforward ways an endearing trait. After all, Isaac ended up betraying her. Aaron wasn't someone who would conceal his true self in front of her, and he wasn't a hypocrite. Although he was narcissistic and abrasive with his words, he would always remain true, gentlemanly too. We'll see. It's not my dating season now, and I should be focused on my studies. Hurry up, I have to go to class soon, April said. I also have to focus on getting away from Rosaria and Isaac, April thought to herself. At Arrington Corporation, Marvin looked nervously at Aaron, who was staring at him. He had come over and pressured him to call Winnie in the morning. He wanted to find out how April was doing, and he even had Marvin put the call on speaker mode. Thank goodness Winnie was smart and didn't let up the fact that he had sold Mr. Bennett out last night. You heard her, Mr. Bennett. April's feeling much better. Aaron was twirling his pen in his fingers. Good for Marvin. His relationship is going more smoothly than mine. He even has a nickname for her. Aaron thought to himself. Hmm, it sounds nice and intimate. Not bad. Aaron asked. All right, where are the books I wanted? They will be delivered by noon today, replied Marvin. All right, I don't have much for you today. Don't disturb me if there's nothing urgent. I will be reading in the afternoon. Aaron instructed his subordinate seriously. Marvin sighed. His boss was having a rough time with his love life. He was resorting to reading self-help books and guides. First about horoscopes and now about communication. What about Miss April? Marvin tried to inquire. Aaron said, I heard she's running errands for a production team by the beach. Maybe you can go investigate that. Arrange a meeting with the main producer while you're at it too. What would you need the information for, Mr. Bennett? Marvin treaded carefully. Aaron wiggled his brows. You wouldn't understand the strategies of a dating expert, he said gleefully. The fuck? He has such a low EQ, but he still dares call himself a dating expert? 
Marvin couldn't help but lament. At 9 a.m., April entered the classroom just in time for Professor Sandler's module. His module was focused on television broadcasting, and there were many people attending that class. She picked an unassuming corner, and when she opened her text, a man with a baseball cap sat down beside her. April, why didn't you go to Professor Newman's class yesterday? I was waiting for you, Ryan asked as he lifted his cap to reveal a big, bright smile. Why is he here? He looks familiar with April Sang. April was startled. She looked around and found that quite some people had seen Ryan. They were looking at him and whispering to each other. You're from the acting department. Why are you here? She asked. You didn't accept my invitation, so I figured you're still upset about what happened the night before last. Ryan rested his chin on his hand and tilted his head to look at April. He didn't care how eye-catching he was. I told you that I don't mind. I was working out there. I was busy. April leaned her palm against her forehead while responding. Just go back to your classroom. I don't get to come to the broadcasting department a lot. I want to know what you've been learning, said Ryan while looking at Professor Sandler who was walking in. Professor Sandler was famously strict, so April had no choice but to stop talking. All right, quiet. Professor Sandler raised a hand and said, Christmas is only a month away. This year, our school will hold a large-scale artistic activity, which will be hosted by a student from our broadcasting department. Unlike previous years this time, some important people from a few film and television companies, local television stations, and some famous directors will all attend. Once Professor Sandler said that, the students in the classroom all began discussing excitedly. Seeing this, Professor Sandler smiled and continued, I think you all understand that this will be a great opportunity. The ones who deliver good performances will have a chance to be remembered. So this time, students from the other departments have all been trying their best. The host from our department also needs to be selected carefully. This host will be the face of our college. Appearance should be secondary. Most importantly, this host needs to be quick of wit and eloquent, resourceful, and able to handle all sorts of situations. She will also need to have a good voice and great sense of music. April clenched her hands. This was an opportunity for every student in the department. Like many of the others, she also needed a chance to stand out. However, even if she managed to impress the others, would Isaac ever give her an opportunity to build her career? With this thought, she slowly loosened her hands and wore a bland look again. Sabrina Miller stood up and said, Professor, I think I can do it. Me too, Riley Hendricks said as she raised her hand as well. Ryan abruptly stood up and said loudly, Professor Sandler, I think April is the best. April gave a start then hurriedly tried to drag his hand down. Ryan ignored her and continued, I heard that April's grade is ranked first in your department. She's talented and experienced. I think every speech or performance she has made in school was natural and smooth. Not only that, she has a stunning appearance. She's known as the prettiest girl in your department. And her voice is incredibly beautiful. She can definitely attract an audience. April paused briefly. She had seen Ryan only a few times in the recent few months, but the speech she made happened in the last semester. She didn't think he would know about it. It's Ryan, my God, why is he here? He looks rather familiar with April. Are they a couple? Many girls in the classroom showed jealousy in their eyes. Yeah, Professor, I agree. Soon, some male students stood up to speak for April. We've heard April sing on KTV. She's no worse than those singers. It's true, April's so pretty. Even if she's talking nonsense, I'd still like to watch her. More and more male students agreed with Ryan. Hearing them, some girls became unhappy. I don't agree, Riley said angrily. We're selecting a host. It's not a beauty contest. She made masterly speeches in school, but so what? Making speeches is different from hosting. If making speeches counts, I've taken an internship in a broadcasting station. Hmm. But the broadcasting station didn't make you a host. Besides, do any of you have better grades than April does? All right, enough with the squabble. Professor Sandler gestured for everyone's silence before things escalated further. I thought April would be a suitable candidate, too. Her good grades, consistency in her academic performance is also laudable, and her adaptability is a good trait. Many of the professors have spoken kindly about her, and those who have objections can go and reflect on yourself. There's a reason why she is the top student in every module, broadcasting, performing arts, and voice acting. Most of you can't even beat her at the foundational class. The room was quiet after Professor Sandler said his piece. April, are you able to take on this challenge? Professor Sandler directed the question at her with seriousness. If you don't succeed, 
you may become known as a joke amongst faculty. I can do it, April announced calmly. Although Isaac was still trying his best to hinder her paths, she couldn't bear to let this great opportunity slip by. He couldn't possibly take everything away from her, could he? Hmm. Since we have a suitable candidate, let's start lessons, shall we? Professor Sandler looked satisfied as he opened his own text. After class, Ryan was quickly surrounded by a group of girls. April glanced at him briefly before walking out of the classroom. April, wait up! Hey, that wasn't very nice of you to leave me behind after I came all the way here for you. Ryan exclaimed after squeezing past the group of girls. Why are you following me around? You're a campus superstar and your fans are going to hate my guts. April sighed deeply. She wanted to live her life drama-free. And all those words you said to Professor Sandler earlier on, don't act as if you know me very well. Who doesn't know your name in the broadcast faculty? Although you try to lay low, you still have a high profile. Did you know you are practically a campus goddess for many of the boys here? Ryan said in a lighthearted manner. Yeah, I never suspected anything before, but tell me honestly, you must have met more beautiful women in the entertainment industry. I doubt my looks are outstanding enough to captivate you in a matter of a few classes, said April, looking at him with suspicion. Ryan looked at her through his grinning eyes before breaking the silence. You are pretty sharp, April Eisenberg. April's shoulders were shaking. She thought only Isaac knew about her identity, but who else knew? She was inspecting this man in front of her with extreme caution now. Please, don't misunderstand. I don't have bad intentions. Ryan raised his hands as a gesture of goodwill. I've met you before, but perhaps you don't remember. Do you remember dubbing an American animated film called Bobby the Robber? I was only 15 years old then, and I was part of the production. My parents got me a role as the little boy in the film, and it was the first time I did voice acting. I thought that I was doing well, until I met you. You were even younger than me, but you dubbed all the lines of the main female character, as well as the lines of the little animals. You did such a perfect job, I was so impressed. When I met you again at Professor Newman's class, I recognized you immediately. April was astonished. She vaguely recalled the film. She was 13 years old then, and everyone dubbed their lines together at the recording studios. She had a good memory and found it strange that she had no recollection of this boy at all. Isaac, why do I like you so much? Back then, I was short, and my face was covered in pimples. Not like now. Ryan shrugged smilingly while continuing. I know that something happened in your family, but what your father did has nothing to do with your talent that I've seen. Sadly, soon afterward, you disappeared. When I saw you again, I found that you've changed your family name. That's a good thing, actually. You can come back to the dubbing circle with a different name and just let bygones be bygones. I really want to help you to return to that circle, and I sincerely want to be your friend. His eyes were clear, and he seemed to mean what he had said. April paused for a little while. She guessed that Ryan didn't know that she was banned by Isaac. After all, he was just an actor and may not know so much about the things behind the screen. But still, she was gratified because he didn't try to hit her when she was down like most of the people she knew had done. I get it. Let me buy you lunch, said April. She felt relieved. No, I'm buying you lunch. Like I've said, it'll be my apology. Ryan's eyes glowed. After saying that, he walked out along with April with a bright smile. After lunch, April headed back to the dorm for a nap. On her way, she got a call from Rosaria. April, you don't want to work here anymore because you've hooked up with a guy with a sports car, do you? In this case, don't blame me for letting Supervisor Sullivan's online series get banned, said Rosaria. Supervisor Sullivan's online series is supposed to air next month, but I haven't heard anything about it even though this month is ending. Who knows how long you're going to make us wait, said April blandly. Since I feel hopeless, I can't possibly waste all my time on you and let you make fun of me. Besides, I don't think I should ruin my own reputation because of Supervisor Sullivan's online series by serving the same man with you, do I? I'm not a goddess who can help all the people in distress. What do you mean? Rosaria said, sounding nervous. Ask Isaac. I broke up with him long ago. He's with you now, but still he came to harass me. I feel disgusted. Finished, April hung up the phone. On the other side of the phone, Rosaria uneasily looked at the man beside her and said, Isaac, you heard her. Isaac remained silent, but turned around to look outside through the French window. I feel disgusted. This short sentence echoed in his mind. 
He looked at his own reflection in the window, recalling all the sweet words April used to say when putting her arms around his neck. Isaac, why are you so handsome? Isaac, why do I like you so much? Isaac, I want to be your wife. Would you marry me? Now he felt that his heart was empty and was aching. The old days were beautiful, yet he could never go back. April had stopped working for Rosaria. She wasn't sure about whether Rosaria and Isaac would go to Supervisor Sullivan and his team. Earlier, she served the two every single day, but Supervisor Sullivan's online series never made progress. She guessed that the two might be fooling around, so she decided to let them know that they couldn't always threaten her. Most importantly, she felt that being with Isaac was a very dangerous man, so she needed to try staying away from him. Recently, Marianne was busy preparing her new album. Annie was back home for the weekend, and Winnie was busy too. Therefore, April was alone in the dorm. At dusk, April went back to the dorm from the library. While she was taking a shower, she heard some noises from the outside. Winnie, are you back? No one responded. April had a bad feeling. She quickly put on her clothes and walked out, but no one was in the dorm. There was no reply, and she felt an uneasy feeling deep down in her stomach. She dressed herself quickly and went outside, but there was no one there. April thought she might have misheard something and left it at that. She dried her hair and then laid in bed to read. At around 10 p.m. when she was about to go to sleep, a series of footsteps could be heard followed by rattling knocks on her door. She got out of bed and opened the door. She was greeted by a group of girls. Standing in front was Riley and Harry from her department. The dormitory housekeeper, Ida, was there too, along with two police officers in uniform. Police officer, it's her. I saw her leaving Riley's room in the evening. She must have been the one who stole the money. Harry pointed accusingly. April looked grim. What money? Ida looked upset. Riley lost $5,000 from her wallet and someone saw you leaving her room in the evening suspiciously. It was Riley's class fees for her training course and she called the police afterwards. I didn't enter her room in the evening. April was shocked at the outrageous accusation and then she recalled the noise she heard earlier when she was showering. She knew something was up and hurriedly explained, I came back to the room straight after class and I had a shower. Do you have an alibi? The police officer asked. April frowned. It was a Saturday and there weren't many people around in the dormitory. She bumped into a couple of people on the way up, but no one she knew and her roommate wasn't around too, so she had no concrete alibi. I guess you don't. The police officer pushed her aside. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to search the room. Which bed is yours? The one in the center, someone pointed out quickly. Do you have a search warrant? You can't just go ahead without an official search warrant. April blocked the officer. Out of my way. The two officers shoved her aside roughly and began flipping her bed upside down and rummaging through her drawers. After three minutes, they found a thick stack of cash in her school bag. It was $5,000 neat. Are you still going to deny thievery? You're just a petty thief with a pretty face, the officer said harshly. Take her away. I didn't do it. You two framed me. I heard someone entering my room when I was showering in the evening. April had pieced things together and was glaring at Harry and Riley. Are you guys jealous that I got the opportunity to host the Christmas event? You think you'll stand a chance once I'm out of the picture, don't you? The crowd that gathered outside her room started whispering about Riley and Harry. Don't spew nonsense. We respect Professor Sandler's decision. It's true that you have better grades than all of us. You stole my money because you're broke, and we all know that. You always order the cheapest set lunch at the canteen, and you only have plain buns in the morning. You could have told us about your financial difficulties, April. We would have gladly lent money to you. You didn't have to do such a thing. Riley spoke with empathy. April was furious. No wonder they were in the performing arts faculty. Cut the crap and follow us to the police station. The officer pushed her along. At this point, she knew that there was no point trying to defend herself. The guards were lined up against her. They must have plotted the scheme carefully. Word would get out and then her reputation would be on the line. At worst, she could be expelled. Even if she kept her place at the university, she would have to give up the MC gig to someone else. The more she thought about the repercussions, the grimmer she got. She racked her brains for a way to clear her name. Everything happened so quickly that she didn't even get a chance to investigate and collect evidence.